So in this lesson, we're going to look at the how do we know that these postulates and theorems we've got really are true. The corresponding angles postulate, we saw in the last lesson a little demonstration that just shows that it was the same. But how do we know it's the same? Do we need to prove this statement that two, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the corresponding angles are congruent? Do we need to prove that? And the answer is we actually don't. We don't need to prove it because A, we're calling it a postulate, and postulates are just accepted as true. And also, every time we prove something, we do have to have some place to begin. And so it's pretty obvious when you look at parallel lines that if this line was turned just a little bit, that it would affect the angle size here, which would in turn make these not match. So having the parallel lines makes the corresponding angles congruent is something we just accept as true, and we go from there. But that being said, the alternate interior angles theorem is named a theorem specifically because it requires proof. Now, whether that proof has already happened, and it has, we're just going to recreate it here, or we just have to take the challenge to prove it, we, we call it a theorem because we're requiring that it be proven. So let's go ahead and build our proof. You remember that a proof has a given statement and a, a prove goal. And we're going to have a diagram as well. So we want to draw a diagram of our hypothesis. Our two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. And that's also our given statement. Let's draw a picture of two parallel lines. Let's mark them with the arrows. And let's go ahead and give them a name. Let's just call them A and line B. And then we need a transversal line drawn on that too. So let's call our transversal line T. And this is our given. We've got line A is parallel to line B with transversal T. And our picture shows that. And we're going to prove that our alternate interior angles are congruent. That's our conclusion. We need to write that as the goal for what we are proving. We're going to prove that, you know, this will be easier if we number them. So let's go ahead and pick some alternate interior angles. Let's call this angle 1. And down here, alternate interior angle 2. And let's just prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So that's our goal. All right, so let's start building our two columns where we're going to write our statements and our reasons. Or justifications. And let's go ahead and just say that we have line A parallel to line B with transversal T. And the reason we've got that is because that's our given statement. That's where we're starting. How are we going to prove that angle 1 and angle 2 have to be congruent? This is going to be a strategy that we're going to use for all of the proofs in this lesson. So watch closely. We are going to choose an angle that is corresponding to one of the two angles we have. So either pick an angle corresponding to angle 1 or pick an angle corresponding to angle 2. I'm going to go ahead and pick it corresponding to angle 2. And let's just name it angle 3. So angle 3 corresponds to angle 2. And I'm going to make that my next statement. If these are corresponding angles, and I know they're congruent. I'm going to claim that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. And my reason for that is the corresponding angles postulate. Corresponding angles are congruent. Now, if angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, in your next line, let's talk about angle 1's relationship to angle 3. I know angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 also, so that's my next claim. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. And the reason I know that is because those are my old friends, the vertical angles. And vertical angles are congruent. We've already proven that theorem. Vertical angles are congruent. So I'm ready to make my last statement. I'm going to put together what we said here in number 2 and also in number 3. Notice that angle 2 matches angle 3. But angle 1 also matches angle 3. Since they both match angle 3, they must match each other. So this is angle 1 has to be a match to angle 2. And that reason there is the transitive property that we talked about before. Since they both go with angle 3, they must be congruent to each other. That's our transitive property. 
So that's what we were trying to prove. Euclid would say QED. We've just proven what we were going to. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and those are alternate interior angles are congruent. Give the video a pause. I want you to try the alternate exterior angles theorem. You're going to follow kind of the same strategy here. Remember, really, the key strategy is labeling that third angle, picking it corresponding to one of the angles you have. So I want you to pause the video and then come back and check your work. All right, here's the things you should have. You should have a given statement. You should have a proof statement. Your given statement should be just like the above. A is parallel to B with transversal T. You should have a diagram to go with it to picture that. You've got A and B, and they are parallel, so put the arrows on them. And you've got a transversal line named T. And your goal is to prove alternate exterior angles are congruent. So you better number a couple of angles of alternate exterior. Let's, I'm putting one here and two here. You might have put them on the opposite sides of the transversal. That's OK. So I'm going to prove that angle one is congruent to angle two. And I'm also going to put an angle three in here. I'll put mine right here, corresponding to one of the given angles so that I can talk about it in my proof. OK, so my first statement, I'm going to list those givens. I've got A parallel to B with transversal T. And I'm just going to justify that as a given. And then I'm going to talk about angle 1 and angle 3's relationship. I know angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 because angle 1 and angle 3, in my picture anyway, are corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are congruent. It's our postulate. Number three, then, I'm going to talk about angle two as a match to angle three. Angle two is congruent to angle three in my picture because they're vertical angles. And vertical angles are congruent from our vertical angles theorem. So last step, since I've established that one matches three and two also matches three, I can finally say that angle one is a match to angle two or congruent because of the transitive property one more time. The transitive property gives me that one. All right, now on the back, we're going to prove our other two theorems. We're going to basically use some of the, the same strategy with that angle 3 being thrown in. So get yourself set up. It's just like last time. We're going to have two parallel lines, column A and B, with transversal T. We're going to prove a couple of angles add to 180. Let's get a picture before we decide which angles those are. So here's my parallel lines. There's my arrows to show it. Here's my transversal. Let me give them their names, A and B, and transversal is T. And I need to label some same side interior angles. So let's go with angle 1 and same side interior right here, angle 2. All right, my goal is to prove that the measure of angle 1 really added to the measure of angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees. OK, so let's get the equation or the, the chart set up. And our strategy is to put an angle 3 in there and make angle 3 correspond to either of your two labeled angles. I'm going to go ahead and put it right here in a corresponding spot to angle 2. So you know the first line by now. You're probably sick of writing it, but we've got actually this one and one more to do it on. So we've got A parallel to B with transversal T. And that's our given. Then I am going to say that angle 2 and angle 3 are a match because of my old friend the corresponding angles postulate. Corresponding angles are always congruent when I have the parallel lines. Then for number three, this is where you need to notice something. How does angle one relate to angle three? Now on the others, it was a vertical angle pair, but what is it right here? Angle one and angle three, they add to a 180. Do you remember what that's called? What are those two angles called in positions like that? They're neighbors, and they add to 180. Let's write that down. So the measure of angle one added to the measure of angle two 
excuse me, angle 3, measure of angle 1 added to the measure of angle 3 equals 180 degrees. I'm going to squeeze it in there. Because what are these two angles called? They're a linear pair. Linear pair we know add to 180. Linear pair equals 180. Okay, now the last part of this, this is the last line, all I need to do is make a trade here. Since angle 2 matches angle 3 in our second line, then can I take angle 3 out of this equation and put angle 2 in its spot? I can. There's a property that says you can take one of them out and replace it with something equal. So I'm going to make this say angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 180. And what is the property that lets me tr trade out angle measures? That's the substitution property to justify that. All right, now that's how you prove these things. Your job is to try the same side exterior angles theorem proof. Try it. I know you can write the given and you can do a proof and should be able to get a picture. And then again, the strategy is to put an angle 3 in your picture, just make it correspond to one of either angle 1 or angle 2, and then you can kind of follow this as a guideline. But I want you to try it on your own, and we'll check you in class.